when billionaire model turned entrepreneur Amanda Cronin broke up with former Wham. Singer Andrew Ridley last year, she cryptically attributed the breakup to his not being relationship material. Cronin boasts of having the longest legs in Belgravia. Given that Karen Wood Ward, one third of Bananarama, and another 1980s legend Ridley had a 25 year relationship, Ridley's comment was somewhat of a blow to women of a certain generation, as many of them once would have sacrificed their cherished leg warmers an icy magenta lipstick for just one of his careless whispers. Amanda explains why Andrew didn't work out while perched on the couch in the living room of her double-fronted, three-storey muse house in Belgravia, central London, with her 39 pins sprawled out in front of her. She arches one tidy brow and says, I'm looking for a monogamous relationship. The next Mr. Wright will share my values when he comes along, I said. I'm a nice, conventional rural girl. I also want to be among individuals who are discriminating and who know what that implies. She continues, I'm bright, demanding, implying that the separation may have been by mutual accord. Not for all people. Although Andrew's old bandmate George Michael tragically passed away on Christmas Day 2016, Amanda didn't seem to be regretting the year she spent swanning around with him until she reported their breakup in the Daily Mail diary back in May. Amanda, who at first didn't recognize the singer, exclaims, It's massive, dating Andrew Ridgely from Wham. Wow. After they were sitting next to one other at a friend's birthday dinner, he offered to accompany him to Wimbledon. I'm quite pleased with it. It was wonderful, a lot of fun, and will make a fantastic chapter in my memoir since he's a terrific guy. Amanda was excited to watch the most recent Wham! documentary, as were the majority of women who were alive during the band's 1980s heyday. Only she could enjoy the excitement of knowing one of its stars well. She tells me, I think it was very well done. It took a lot of courage for Andrew to speak forward, and we frequently discussed the documentary. He truly wanted people to realise what a beautiful talent George Michael was. A singer, composer, producer, an excellent friend, said one person. He wanted people, especially the younger population, who may only have known of George Michael from bad stories about his sickness and tragic demise. Additionally, each member of the band played a huge part, not just the two supporting vocalists Pepsi and Shirley. While most autobiographies would feature dating a pop celebrity, Amanda's life has been so intriguing that it was already destined to be a page-turner from beginning to end. Prior to meeting Andrew, she gained the most notoriety for her appearance on the television program The Millionaires and Me, which followed her unlikely friendship with Martin Reed, a formerly homeless filmmaker. During the program, she talked about her £10 million jewellery collection and £200,000 chauffeur-driven Bentley while also, ironically, volunteering in a charity shop in the Welsh town of Merthyrted Phil. The show drew a sizeable crowd, many of whom were offended by Amanda's alleged frivolity 
and assertions that if wealthy people like her were to have to pay more tax, we all would suffer because they would just uproot and take their fortune with them. She invited me to her lovely Belgravia house so we could discuss her new enterprise, the Amanda Caroline skincare brand. Its high-end products, which, according to Amanda, are in the prestige category with La Prairie, Llama, and Augustinus Bader, were created during the epidemic and are now offered online and in retail locations throughout the world, including Fenwick and Saks Fifth Avenue. The Hortrose Cream Clay Foaming Cleanser costs only £65 as opposed to the eye-watering £260 price tag of the Hortlift Duo Serum and Cream. We refer to the products as slow aging instead of anti aging because it is not achievable. The Body Shop's Anita Roddick and Elizabeth Arden's former biochemical employee worked closely with Amanda to develop the line, which promises to thicken, fill, firm, and hydrate the skin for 72 hours while reducing pigmentation and wrinkle depth. Although there is competition in the skincare sector, Amanda, 54, is completely focused on achieving astronomical success. Incredibly self-assured, Amanda adds, I have all the tools in place, everything that I need around me to get this business to where it needs to be. It might sound huge, to build a billion-dollar company, and only certain people have done that, men, mainly. I'm not even phased, she said. Amanda, who is regarded as one of the richest women in the UK, undoubtedly has the financial resources. She divorced co-founder Mark Deitch in 2019, who is said to be worth over £40 million, and founded the energy and broadband firm First Utility, which has since been acquired by Shell. The pair wed in 2013 and, in style, travelled back and forth between Geneva, the south of France, London, and Monaco before divorcing in 2017 after increasing amounts of time apart. She leans in and gives me a refreshingly open explanation. We weren't getting along, he had a lot of work pressure and got very upset, and I think I became an easy target. I reasoned, if you're going to be in a bad mood, I'll go to London, be with my daughter, my friends, and be somewhere I feel comfortable. Although she can now speak about this time with some distance, Amanda recalls it as a very dark time during which she formed a tranquilizer habit. She claims that the only other occasion she had anxiety was when her marriage ended. I used Xanax because it was a really terrible period. Even though I only ever did a mouse's nibble as I used to refer to it it was a crutch at the time and helped me get by. However, it's quite hard to remove, so I kept some in each bag, purse, and travel pouch I had. The epidemic ended up being Amanda's saving grace. She was among the first people to die from COVID in March 2020 before the vaccines, and since she was feeling so ill, she decided that quitting Xanax and the sleeping pills she was already taking would speed up her recovery. Any withdrawal symptoms she may have had, she attributed to COVID. As I was beginning to feel better, I realized that I hadn't taken any medication in six weeks and decided, 
Oh, I'll keep going, she adds. I pulled out every tablet and threw it away, so I said. Although tense at first, her relationship with her ex, who served as a father figure to her daughter Sophia, 25, whom she had during a brief marriage in her 20s, is now better. She declares, we have broken bread, so we are good. Although Amanda came from an aspirational family and grew up in a big country house in Hampshire with her surgeon uncle, she had a public education and went to a Catholic school in Southampton. Her father and uncle conducted a plastic surgery business together. Because of this, she is honoured to have been able to provide Sophia, a Swiss-based artist whose early needlework and nude paintings decorate Amanda's walls with the best education money can buy. Prior to attending Queen's Gate, the senior school in South Kensington that Queen Camille attended, and later Parsons School of Design in New York, Sophia attended Hill House, the same primary school in Knightsbridge that King Charles attended. In comparison to Queen's Gate, where tuition costs more than £25,000 a year and is currently £18,000 at Hill House, Amanda takes great pleasure in having paid for Sophia's whole education herself. Being financially independent is crucial to her because she raised Sophia as a single parent for the most of her life after divorcing Sophia's father, a commercial real estate entrepreneur, when Sophia was a little child. I would definitely suggest it, adds Amanda. I believe it to be a risky ground for women to be financially dependent on men. Her travels this summer, which included business meetings along the way, have already brought her to Florence, Finland, the US, where she visited New York and the Hamptons, and will be completed with a stay at the exclusive Hotel Du Cap, which she has referred to as a home from home, on the French Riviera, and a week in Monte Carlo. Amanda is keen to emphasize that she worked hard throughout her marriage, managing investment and property portfolios, and serving as a sounding board for issues relating to her ex-husband's business. Marrying and divorcing a multimillionaire must have helped her maintain this opulent lifestyle. Given her existing luxurious lifestyle, I can't help but wonder where she finds the motivation to create a billion-dollar company at a point in our lives when the majority of us, given the choice, would happily rest on our laurels. I feel fantastic, she declares. I like how I look, and I feel content, at ease, and joyful. My motivation at work stems from the fact that I have this chance and am seizing it. I'm 54. In my opinion, that's young. I want to make the most of the many years of experience I have under my belt and the possibly excellent 40 years that lie ahead of me. Given that she was diagnosed with skin cancer in her early 30s, Amanda may have more reason than most to value the potential of living a long life. While she was in the bath, she saw a suspicious-looking black mole on her inner thigh. The doctor later discovered it was the worst, most aggressive malignant melanoma, and he warned her that if she had waited another six months, the cancer would have been fatal. Because so much of Amanda's job entailed swimsuits and hosiery, the life-saving operation created a big scar that, in the days before Photoshop, all nearly put a stop to her £800-plus-a-day modelling career. 
Her primary emphasis, though, as a single mother of a six-year-old at the time, was on getting better and maintaining her emission. She now always wears SPF 50 and gets her moles checked out. Having previously given little consideration to such issues, Amanda's trauma inspired her to acquire a deep interest in skin, which she refers to as our biggest organ, and to seek out the best ways to both preserve and nourish it. This finally led to her decision to design and launch her skincare line. She identifies as an alpha female. She declares, I'm a CEO, a boss. I don't follow the pack. I don't belong to a sizable population. That makes me uneasy, but I've never figured out why. Do not misunderstand me. I have many wonderful pals. I'm very lucky to have loved ones who support me, but I'm also a free spirit, a visionary leader, and an independent woman. With the help of swimming, yoga practice, and strength training under the guidance of a former Russian athlete, Amanda, who admits to having a weakness for crisps and crisps, has managed to maintain her size 8 figure. She is capable of lifting up to 70 kilograms. She began taking HRT last year to deal with digestive problems even though she was going through the menopause, and she just privately added prescription testosterone. Testosterone has undoubtedly improved Amanda's libido who is now constantly single. It also aids in increasing one's strength and vitality. Amanda is astonished to learn that, in her mid-fifties, even though she could easily pass for a decade younger, she hasn't yet felt the desire to have surgery. She is used to tweakments like collagen boosting procedures and sporadic Botox injections. One constant regret is that she was unable to expand her family because it just never happened. She acknowledges having broody feelings since she was 16 and daydreaming about having three children. Amanda comments with her characteristic optimism, I thought I would have more children, but that makes me even more grateful for my daughter. That's why I have Monty, a little white poodle. He is 12 years old and does a great job acting like my son. If Mr. Wright appears, Amanda doesn't rule out getting married once more. It would have to be someone really special, she adds, because she doesn't feel inadequate about being unmarried and can concentrate on her career and doing what she wants because her kid is doing well. Former pop stars are not required to apply unless they can demonstrate that they are relationship material, 